Tonight on Spotlight, a buried fortune just there for the taking. Northern Ireland could be sitting on top of enough natural gas to keep our homes and businesses powered for the next 50 years. But critics say the method used to reach the gas, called fracking, will destroy the environment. So do we face an economic bonanza or an environmental blunder? We've come to America to see firsthand what could be coming to Northern Ireland. You're not going to have them nice green hills anymore. You can kiss it all goodbye. We journey into the heart of a controversy where accusation and suspicion surround the debate on fracking. There's only one group here that's consistently found to be misrepresenting the situation and that's the environmental movement. We have found at every turn that everything they say has been a lie. Fracking for shale gas is huge. It's an industry that has changed the dynamics of the world energy markets. It's swept America. Gas imports there have fallen since it's been able to drill for its own. Fracking promises a cheaper source of energy at a time when gas prices here are set to rise. So could some of those benefits come Northern Ireland's way? When we went to America to find out, we heard a bitter debate with two sides at war. What's your message for the people of Vermont? Don't do it! Don't do it! Who are you lobbying for? Are you lobbying for the fish or are you lobbying for human beings? Uh, we can have both. In the middle of it all, a Northern Irishman who says the environmentalists' claims are ludicrous. Sean and Yoko, why are you coming here? Why are you coming here when the water has been declared safe by the Environmental Protection Agency? They aren't crazy about him either. So go back to where you came from. I had to get to the bottom of this. County Fermanagh. It's thought that beneath this land lies enough natural gas to transform Northern Ireland's future. Tamboran, the company that wants to get it, says it will help us all and it wants to start drilling by 2015. We do know there's gas there. What we don't know is how much. We've estimated at the moment about 2.2 trillion cubic feet, which is something like 40 or 50 years supply for Northern Ireland, a quite considerable resource. But a number of locals are opposing it, and in particular, the controversial technique used to recover the gas, fracking. It's deeply divisive. The method involves pumping water, chemicals and sand deep below the surface to fracture shale rocks, releasing natural gas. Once the water has cracked the rock, the gas escapes and returns up to the surface. The technique has divided opinion worldwide. Fracking was halted in England after it was thought to have triggered small earthquakes near Blackpool two years ago. And in America, fracking processes there have been linked to contaminated drinking water supplies and methane gas leaks. But it's the rolling countryside here that could become a new industrial production zone. In 2010, Stormont said it would give out new petroleum licences, allowing companies to look for oil and gas. It awarded four shortly after. One of them was for Tamborin's explorations here in Fermanagh. It's uh, Limestone Lake, this is Belcoo uh, at the top of it. Uh, John Sheridan's family has been on this land for four generations and he's farmed it all his life. He drank the water from his well here as a boy and says he's not prepared to allow the fracking company to risk that resource. I don't have a problem with industry coming in, but this is a different thing. This is a different animal coming in and people need to make themselves aware of the dangers of it first. Just because pe people have a perception that once they hear oil or gas and we're sitting on oil or gas, that we've all won the lotto. That is not the case. And it's not a case of fracking at any cost. The, we've got to weigh up the costs. And the danger is that the harm that could be done to this may never, ever, ever be rectified. John is part of a vocal anti-fracking movement in Fermanagh. The campaign has attracted followers from all around the county, like here. 
This is the village of Garrison, where Sean Maguire runs a fishing tackle shop. It sits by an area of potential exploration for the gas drillers. Here, tourism counts. The lock attracts fly fishers from afar, and Sean fears heavy industry will drive away visitors and harm the economy. We have uh, an environment here which is unspoilt, um, and um, we have fishing which is unspoilt and second to none in the world. Um, this, this species of trout is nowhere else found in the world. So locally here we're trying to protect that species and we're trying to keep the environment as clean um, and unspoilt for future generations. But others are in favour of drilling the land. Tamborin told us they have received several hundred job applications even before advertising a role. They're proposing up to a thousand gas wells in a fracking zone spanning southwest Fermanagh. One economist says that as long as it's done safely, the gas bonanza is an opportunity we can't afford to pass up. We uh, have severe fuel poverty here. We import most of our uh, raw materials for producing energy. The renewable sector is still very underdeveloped here. And so a, a, an indigenous fossil fuel source would be a major boon to the economy. Fermanagh certainly needs an economic kickstart. The county has faced job losses in recent months. And the company wanting to drill for gas say they have something to offer a region that's having a hard time. I was down the other day in, in Inniskillen and somebody pointed out to me the number of empty shops down the, the high street there. Money will be going into those communities. You'll see a, a revival of commerce and, and business generally. Spotlight was also down the other day in Inniskillen and heard mixed views on the fracking issue. I don't think it's a good idea at all. Well, I think it's tampering with nature. You know, really, it's, it's, it's risky in a small area. It's all right if you're away in sort of a you know, open space away from everything. Uh, anything I've read about it, I don't like. I think it's a great idea. We need the energy and it needs to be done. So on the one hand, a new source of energy and a potential real boost to the economy. But on the other, genuine concerns about the longer lasting effects to the environment here. Many of the people we caught up with remain to be convinced. Despite fears of pollution and earth tremors, it's clear that government advisers are looking seriously at how to do it. They are potentially serious risks, but like all risks, they can be contained if they're properly regulated. Uh, fracking is an engineering process, like, for example, building a skyscraper, building the channel tunnel. All of these things have, can and have been done successfully. It's a process of good engineering practice. <laughs> If Tamborin have their way, Fermanagh will become the centre of a new natural gas industry for Northern Ireland. They say they want that within two years. But why has fracking stoked such fear? And are the benefits it could bring really that significant? To find out, I needed to see it firsthand. Fracking for shale gas in America has been working at an industrial scale for the last decade. It stimulated the economy and kept gas prices low. And like back at home, it also divides opinion. Recently, the controversy's been so great that it's become the stuff of a Hollywood film. This town, this life, it's dying. You all see it coming and you just don't get out of the way. Promised Land tells the story of how a gas company comes to a small Pennsylvanian town, triggering a campaign against their plans to frack the area. I am happy to announce we will be bringing natural gas to McKinley. So I went to Pennsylvania too. This land is one of the most fracked parts of America, and it's here that the debate burns brightest. And into all this walks a man from County Tyrone, a documentary filmmaker who has no time for the environmental campaign against fracking. Phelan McAleer is the bane of the Green Lobby. He had previously made a film funded by a mining company before turning his attention to the gas drilling industry and those who criticise it. And many in the green camp don't like him one bit. I am armed, I will tell you that. You're armed. We meet in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. We take a drive around town while Phelan spreads the good news. I'd say to the people from Manor, look around your own community, you know, if 99% of your community said that this is not 
affected water and a disaffected 1% said it has, who would you listen to? Phelan says we should all be embracing fracking and that people in Fermanagh should get behind this industry for the difference it can make. So, you know, people who do it have to be housed, fed, watered, they need bars, uh, their places have to be cleaned, they need equipment, they have to hire plant, uh, you know, they need access, they need, there's pipelines to be built. It, you know, have a walk around Williams, Williamsport. 40 or 50 years uh, of an economic boom, I don't call that a bubble, I call that life-changing. Several people we spoke to agreed. Hotel manager Mark Shevsky has seen an upturn in his line of work since the gas drillers came to town. It's tremendous. I mean, what we've seen in this town, the expansion of, uh, of uh, hospitality uh, business, restaurants, hotels, um, it, it seems like a new hotel is going up every day. And in some of the areas like Bradford County and uh, to the west of us in Ohio and West Virginia, there are not enough hotel rooms to satisfy the need. Phelan McAleer says the economic argument is paramount and dismisses the claims of the anti-fracking campaigners. You should really look at, at some of the exaggerations and some of the frauds that people have perpetrated about fracking. You know, their dog died, their, you know, their granny is sick, their husband doesn't fancy them anymore. I mean, the, the litany of, of things that fr fracking ha has caused is, is vast and ludicrous. But some who live close to Pennsylvania's fracking rigs say the industry blights their lives. I've been invited to hear the concerns of a group of anti-fracking activists. They meet at the home of Barbara Jarmoska. So, the steep decline rates mean that the 40-year well production life that the... She's taken the fight against fracking to the industry and is spreading the word to foreign visitors like myself. We sat out on my deck last summer with the South Africans. We've been with the French. We've been with the Germans. The, a woman from Switzerland's coming on Tuesday. Um, well, so, what, what's your message for the people of Fermanagh? Don't do don't it. Don't do it. <laughs> the group say fracking is polluting their land, and they fear that long-term damage is being done by drilling near their water. You know, once your water's gone, you, your life is gone. After the meeting, Barbara takes me up to a fracking site a few miles from her home to see for myself. This is a very big tourism area, or was. No one's going to want to come and, and see this and follow these trucks. And does this kind of stuff happen 24 hours a day, or does this do 9 to During five? the frack job, it's 24 hours a day, yes. When they're fracking, they don't, they don't stop. What do you think when you see this kind of thing? What happened to my life? A huge volume of traffic takes millions of gallons of water and the necessary chemicals to and from the site. The companies say this activity only lasts a period of months on any one drill site. But of course, there are two sides to the debate here. Jenny tells me that her family has been here since the 1950s and she's made money from leasing her land to the drillers. It's pretty much a good impact as far as the economy goes. <laughs> This over here, it's only temporary, and it'll be gone by December of this year. Later, Barbara explains that she hasn't always been against fracking, but that changed following a series of industrial accidents and cases of methane gas escaping into the drinking water in parts of Pennsylvania. The industry challenges the view, however, that fracking led to those incidents. We really believed four years ago that there was perhaps a way to do this responsibly. We need the energy. We are not happy about dependence on foreign oil. This is an energy resource that is available to us. So we did not feel nearly as strongly about it as we do now. We gave the industry the benefit of the doubt. We listened to their promises. We, they came in and said, we want to be do good neighbors. We want to do this responsibly. We want to, to be wary of the environment and the possible degradation that could come and, and do everything we can to mitigate that. We have found at every turn that everything they say has been a lie. Public controversy has accompanied fracking at every turn. Bad press here has travelled the world. Much of this was down to what happened here in the rural Pennsylvania countryside.
This is the village of Dimmock, and for many, this is where the global debate about the environmental cost of fracking all began. Four years ago, local residents here blamed fracking for contaminating their water supply. There were similar problems in the next county. As a result, Pennsylvania State fined two drilling companies several million dollars. Tom Wilbur covered the story. Yes, the water in Dimmock was affected. I believe, uh, I have to get the exact number, but on the order of 40 or 50 uh, different families who were affected by methane migration with the water. The companies maintained that these incidents weren't their fault, but nonetheless, they still paid up, and the Dimmock contamination story went global. There were people that were uh, not career activists, certainly, uh, just local people that um, started asking questions. They opened up their homes to the media. Uh, the story got bigger. People started focusing on this group of people whose water was affected. That one house way up there on the hill, it's contaminating that one house. So, this is local uh, resident and campaigner Ray Kemble. He lives across the road from this, a gas well site, and it's pretty clear what he thinks about fracking. He became involved in a media storm when he said his water had been contaminated. It's been a thorn in their side ever since. There's 27 different chemicals in the water. Okay, uh, last test done here. Uh, drink eight ounces of my water. I'll give you three days to live. Ray won't drink his water, even though last summer, after inspecting residence supplies, the US Environmental Protection Agency decided to end their inquiries into the township's water. Some said that meant the water was good to go. We put that view to Ray. Dimmick's water isn't polluted, but you think your water is Oh, I know polluted. it is. It's all caused from the drilling process, you know, the concrete jobs, the drilling, and the fracking. It's the whole process. It's not just one process. It's the whole entire process, right from the, doing the concrete, right to the, putting the casing in, to the drilling. The dr I mean, even, uh, even the company's own records will show where over their casings will fail immediately in the drilling process. And they fail even more during the fracking process. Despite finding some contaminants in the supply, the agency's decision to take no further action for some gives Dimmock's water a clean bill of health and gets the fracking industry off the hook. That shifted the scrutiny onto the anti-fracking lobby. This is Gasland, an award-winning documentary on the dangers of fracking in America. And this is a key moment. Whoa, Jesus. Tap water set on fire a supposed result of gas leaks from nearby drilling. But critics say this has been well known for decades, a common occurrence in methane-rich areas of the country. Despite all this, the anti-fracking campaign continues, and in Dimmock, at least, Ray Campbell's house still provides a focal point. He has welcomed high-profile celebrities to his home, like Yoko Ono and Sean Lennon, except now they're facing a backlash led by that man from Tyrone. Sean and Yoko, why are you coming no, here? Me, why are you coming here when the water has been declared safe by the Environmental you. Protection Agency? Can I ask you that? Is this who we were giving the water to? Phelan McAleer wanted to know why celebrities like Oscar-winning actress Susan Sarandon were still focusing on a small number of villagers when he claims the majority was quite happy with fracking and the new money it brought. Go, go, go back to where you came from. Susan, why are you here representing the 1%? I'm looking for a hat like him got it. He says the Green Movement has to account for overinflating the dangers associated with fracking. Let's go back to the original allegation with Dimmock, Pennsylvania and ask the environmental movement, you know, do you think you got it wrong? There's only one group here that's consistently found to be misrepresenting the situation and that's the environmental movement, uh, which is, you know, anti-fracking at its core. So, case closed? Far from it. Wider investigations into the dangers of fracking by the US Environmental Protection Agency are ongoing. But it's a delicate subject. They have said that in one case, fracking was the best explanation for groundwater contamination. But they told Spotlight they will not comment on it just yet. I travelled north to a town called Montrose. Even a few minutes at the crossroads shows the most visible sign of the industry at work. 
the constant rumble of lorries making their way to and from well drilling sites, bringing water, waste, cement and even the rigs themselves. I came here to meet someone who says the arrival of fracking and gas drilling has breathed new life into the area and can do the same for Fermanagh. Tom Shepstone promotes fracking for the gas industry. Well, my message to uh, Northern Ireland would be that this is a tremendous opportunity if you've got a disadvantaged area and if you're needing rural economic development. There are very few ways to do rural economic development, and you can achieve rural economic development with, without much disturbance of your landscape. Your landscape will be pretty much the same as it always was. Yes, there will be a few changes. Yes, there will be more traffic. But ultimately, isn't the idea of economic development to build traffic? Isn't that what we want? Uh, yes, there's a, there's a bit of a downside, uh, but that downside is very, very minimal and it's very, very manageable. The drilling, fracking and pumping stages of extracting the gas are intensive, but after they've stopped and those trucks have gone, it's quite a different picture. We saw dozens of these dotted through Pennsylvania's countryside. If fracking does come to Northern Ireland, this is the kind of thing we can expect to see. Down there is what's known as a pad. It's a flat graveled surface and those things there that you can see, they're the wells that go deep, deep down into the ground. And those pads can be very small when the heavy industry disappears. But high profile incidents continue to sully the industry's reputation. It's not helped by the secrecy that US companies have kept around the chemicals they use. And that's left regulators and politicians with less than a clear picture of what's going on. My whole position on this, if I have one, it's not about, again, the risks versus the benefits. I understand both sides clearly. It's the transparency. Even in this country where politicians have been getting their minds around it for 10 years, um, still a lot of them still don't have strong positions on it, or they're treating it very cautiously. What we found in America was a controversy that shows no signs of blowing over and two sides who refused to agree on almost anything to do with the rights and wrongs of fracking. But it is how we respond to this industry and its past failings that will inform just what it will look like if it begins in earnest back in Northern Ireland. All eyes are on the American experience. A potential new industry waits in the wings and is gearing up to transform Northern Ireland and Fermanagh. It was time to go home. Just picture derricks coming off out of a pad. Northern Ireland's agricultural output was over £1.7 billion last year. John Sheridan is worried that will be put in jeopardy and fears for his way of life if fracking comes. There's too much at risk. I think that it's not a good bet, it's not a good gamble. Uh, for all the jobs, it, 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 this will not produce a lot of jobs. It only takes a few people to look after a pad at the end of the day when it's fracked. So the jobs are very, very short time. There'll be uh, a huge uh, takeover of communities for a short amount of time. Then they're gone and the communities are left to clear up the mess. So could fracking really yield the riches promised? Last month, leading consultants PwC reported on the industry here and included an estimate that said Northern Ireland's gas could be worth a startling £80 billion. Some say that's far too high. My feeling is that uh, that uh, estimate is very, very much uh, over-optimistic. So on the basis of what we know and, and certain projections about future supply, those, those projections are very, very, uh, there's a very wide um, confidence interval around those. Even Tamboran say it's more like 15 billion. PwC have themselves since told Spotlight that the figure was theoretical. Yet even a more conservative return from gas could still mean a massive boost for Fermanagh. If we can be more confident that the full environmental and social costs of extraction of natural gas, whether it's using fracking or some other uh, innovative technology, if we can be sure that the costs of that in their entirety uh, are more than compensated for by the economic benefits of extraction, then of course we should go ahead with it. 
The Environment Minister has visited the states in the last few days and met with the US Environmental Protection Agency on fracking. And ultimately, it's the minister who will rubber stamp any proposals to frack back in Northern Ireland. The current minister has followed the US story closely and largely because of this, he told Spotlight that fracking is not an immediate prospect. On the 16th of March last year, I sat down with the Environmental Protection Agency. That's why I'm sitting down with them this St. Patrick's to see how less cavalier America might be and if there is anything worthwhile in their experience to inform us as to how we might go in the future. Mindful that for me there is very much a red light currently on the issue of fracking in Northern Ireland. But no matter how much Fermanagh and Northern Ireland need a boost, it seems that the lack of clarity on the science will keep plans at bay for now. Ultimately and crucially, all of that has to be based upon whether the science, uh, which is still emerging and which is contradictory, whether the science says there can be an amber light uh, for this in the future. Those who say that fracking is possible here are sure the science can be made safe to explore every energy option we have. Well, I don't, I don't think we, we, we know enough now to know that it is safe, and that that is the purpose of the research that is going on, to determine what the characteristics are uh, uh, of the process to ensure that it is safe. And while the research is still evolving, the debate will continue. Tambourin are eager to press ahead. Others say we have to wait. On my journey to America, the fracking capital of the world, I heard that the environmental concerns need not stand in the way of progress. It really comes down to a choice. Who, who are you lobbying for? Are you lobbying for the fish or are you lobbying for human beings? Uh, we can have both. We can have fish and human beings. But the concerns on the other side were not going to be brushed away. We have seen lives dashed against the rocks over and over and an industry at every turn that denies it was their fault. We all need and use energy, which means fracking for gas here could become a necessity. And at a time of economic hardship, Tambourins say the benefits to our economy will outweigh any potential dangers to our countryside. One can never say in life there's no risk in anything you do, but you've got to balance that against the rewards. And the rewards in that area, not only to the local people, to the country, and I would say actually to the environment, to the farming community, and that sort of thing, are going to be potentially considerable. Real change may be coming, and people are already braced for it. When fracking starts, and everybody knows that fracking has started, mm -hmm. what impact will that have on people's livelihoods here? I'd say it's time for me to get a farm. As serious as that? As serious as that. As you, so as soon as fracking starts, you think, this isn't my game anymore? Farming? Yes. The course of Fermanagh's future, and that of Northern Ireland, could be changed by the gas buried deep below the ground. But until more is known about the lucrative but problematic new science of fracking, uncertainty will continue to be exploited to the full on both sides of the debate.